Welcome to Steel Incorporated's Chainsaw Safety, Maintenance, and Operation. This program has been developed to give chainsaw operators the basic information needed to properly and safely use a chainsaw. Although this program will cover a wide variety of subjects, Steel always recommends that before you operate your chainsaw, read and fully understand your owner's manual. This manual will cover the important items that will be specific to your chainsaw's design, features, and operation. Shown here is the chainsaw's anti-vibration system, commonly referred to as the AV system. Made up of a series of vibration isolating buffers, the AV system is designed to reduce the transmission of vibrations created by the engine and the cutting attachment to your hands, increasing control, comfort, and decreasing fatigue. The AV system should be part of your periodic inspection and maintenance process, which will be covered later in this program. If the AV system is ever in question or has failed, repair it immediately or take your chainsaw to your authorized dealer for the necessary repairs prior to using your chainsaw again. These are the chainsaw's front and rear hand guards. The rear guard is designed to protect your right hand as well as a key feature used in one method of properly starting your chainsaw. The front hand guard is designed to protect against projecting branches and reduces the risk of the left hand coming into contact with the chain if your hand were to slip off the handlebar. The front hand guard on steel chainsaws also functions as part of the chain brake device that stops the rotation of the chain if activated. And an additional chain brake activation device that can be found on many saws today is an inertia chain brake available on steel chainsaws also capable of stopping the rotation of the chain in certain situations if the kickback force is high enough, even if your hand doesn't contact the front hand guard. A third braking device available on select steel chainsaws called the QS chain braking system is located at the rear handle. When the operator completely releases the rear handle and the interlock lever with their right hand, the braking device is activated and stops the rotation of the chain. Kickbacks will be covered in more detail in the chainsaw operation portion of this program. Another very important safety feature is the throttle trigger interlock. This feature helps in preventing the chainsaw from accidentally accelerating when moving around in the work area. When you have a firm grip on the rear handle, the throttle trigger interlock is depressed. You can now activate the throttle trigger and accelerate the saw. When you release the rear handle, the throttle trigger interlock isn't depressed and the saw's throttle trigger will not activate, accelerating the saw unexpectedly, a situation that otherwise could cause serious injury. Your saw will have controls for the starting and stopping functions of the engine. Steel uses their trademarked master control lever shown here. One lever performs all of the functions necessary from full choke, fast idle for warm start, followed by the run position, and stop, which turns the engine off. Check your chainsaw's owner's manual if you have a system different from this for the proper operating functions of your controls. Some chainsaws come with a decompression valve, typically on chainsaws with higher displacement engines. Depressing this valve releases compression in the cylinder, resulting in easier pulling action when starting. Once the engine begins to run, the decompression valve will automatically return to the closed position, allowing the engine to regain full compression. A feature to be aware of on your chainsaw, particularly in the maintenance process, is access to the air filter. Here, steel utilizes a toolless air filter cover that can let you easily access the filter for quick inspection, cleaning, or replacement. Some chainsaws come with a winter-summer shutter, a device that can be adjusted to the winter position, allowing the saw to draw heat from around the cylinder into the air box where the carburetor is located. This is useful when using your chainsaw in damp and cold climates, where icing of the carburetor can occur. Then, when working in warmer conditions, the shutter can be reversed to the summer position, blocking the warm air from entering the air box and overheating the carburetor. Some carburetors can be adjusted to compensate for conditions such as altitude or climate, yet others may be preset and non-adjustable. Check your owner's manual for the proper carburetor adjustment procedures for your saw. Your chainsaw has two fluid reservoirs. One will hold gasoline and two-cycle oil mix that will fuel and lubricate the engine. And the other reservoir is for bar and chain oil needed to lubricate the bar and chain. 
A mistake sometimes made by novice chainsaw users is to put raw, unmixed gasoline into the fuel reservoir and oil in the bar and chain oil reservoir, thinking that the two will mix automatically to create the gasoline oil mix needed to run and lubricate the engine. Be very careful not to make this mistake, as it will result in serious and costly damage to your chainsaw. Never run a chainsaw with raw, unmixed gasoline. Always pre-mix your gasoline with the proper two-cycle engine oil in a separate container for your chainsaw's needs. And use specially formulated bar and chain oil for your bar and chain reservoir. Check your owner's manual for the recommended gasoline and two-cycle oil mixture ratio. Steel recommends a 50 to 1 ratio when using steel branded oil and gasoline that has a minimum octane rating of 89. Another small but helpful feature on this steel chainsaw are the cap retainers preventing the fuel and chain oil reservoir caps from possibly being dropped in the dirt, or worse yet, becoming lost. These lines cast into the chainsaw are called felling sights, sometimes referred to as gunning sights, a feature often used by today's professionals in modern felling techniques. They aid in helping the chainsaw operator fall a tree in a desired location more precisely. Your chainsaw will come with a muffler equipped with a spark arrester, the muffler and spark arrester must be inspected periodically and maintained, which we will cover in the maintenance segment of the program. On the clutch side of the chainsaw, you will find the chain adjustment mechanism. Although there are several different designs of adjusters depending on the manufacturer, the procedure used to adjust the chain will basically be the same for everyone. When you remove the chain and sprocket cover, you will see a device called a chain catcher. This is another important protective device designed to reduce the risk of personal injury in the event of a thrown or broken chain. Here you see the bar and chain oil feed rate adjustment available on many of the newer saws made today. Different feed rates of bar and chain oil may be required for different bar lengths or types of wood being cut. By turning this adjustment clockwise or counterclockwise, you will vary the oil feed rate as required for your working conditions. With the steel system, the E setting is the most economical. Turning the adjustment clockwise increases the oil feed rate and turning it counterclockwise decreases the oil feed rate. The spike bumper on the front of the saw is designed to hold the saw steady against the wood when cutting, particularly when bucking. We hope that this program will help make your chainsaw cutting experience a safer and more enjoyable one. For further information about your steel chainsaw, see your authorized steel dealer. For more information on steel, please see our website at steelusa.com or phone us at 1-800-GO-STEEL.